they want something flavored, I let them go there. And then I tell them, like, hey, after a while, we're going we gonna to graduate you guys. Yeah. You can always come home. Exactly. So it's always going to be here for you. But we, we want you to kind of really get into the cigar community. So You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host. Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. All right, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Jared and I are in another location. A new cigar lounge for us, but we are in Titusville right now. I want to introduce to you Barkeem from the Leaf Lounge. How are you doing today? Doing well. How are you guys doing today? Good, good. Thanks for happy having morning. us. Good morning. Yeah, happy happy Saturday morning. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. No, it's Saturday. It's oh, be Saturday. it is Saturday. <laughs> happy Saturday morning, everybody. Long week, huh? Yeah, he's, he, I, I'm glad he's keeping in mind this is not going to go up today, but it is going to be Saturday, so. <laughs> oh, well, then there you go. There you go. But yeah, so we are in the Leaf Lounge. This is... Uh, a cigar lounge in Titusville, Florida. We're going to get more into the details there. Uh, if you want to ask the first question, go ahead. Yeah, so we actually met not so long ago. Uh, what, what, what got you into cigars? Like, how did you meet the cigar industry? I, uh, it was definitely just a hobby. I've been smoking now for almost 12 years. And um, just randomly, uh, a friend of mine called me up one day and was like, hey, man, me and the guys are going to go hang out. We're going to a cigar lounge. You want to come? And I said, no, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't smoke. At, at the time, I didn't smoke anything. Yeah. Cigars, cigarettes, other things. I just didn't smoke anything. So I was like, there's no reason for me to go. I don't smoke. He was like, well, there'll be alcohol there. I'm like, all right. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> That's fine. And so we went, and uh, it was downtown Orlando. We were at Corona's. And he was like, listen, we, you know, you're here. We're all smoking. You, you got to try one. You know, That's how they get you. And I'm like, ah, you know, fine. Went in Rome. The first stick I, I got, uh, I smoked was a Java Red. Okay. So it wasn't too, you know, not too heavy, yeah, not too light. Good. Very, you know, aromatic, very sweet. So I was like, all right, I could try this. Fine. I lit it up. I smoked it. I was like, hmm, okay. This is not what I thought it was going to be. Had a nice little flavor to it. I said, I, I could do this occasionally. We had a good time that night, and pretty much every day after that, I've been smoking cigars. And uh, that was that was my introduction to smoking cigars. So I had been smoking every day for years, and I kind of I did the the classic graduating thing. So I went through all the flavored stuffs, the Tabox, the Deadwoods, you know, all that little all those things. And then one day I just was like, you know what? I, I don't really want to do anything sweet. I've been smoking for about a year and a half now. I want to try something a little bit more uh, robust. Yeah. And when I tell you I jumped in the deep end, I jumped in the deep end. I literally went right back to that Corona downtown Orlando, and I just was looking around. I didn't want to spend a lot of money, so I just was looking, and then an LFD double arrow caught my eye. <laughs> it was like ten bucks. Yeah. It was like a fifty-six gauge, a fifty-eight gauge. So I was like, all right, this is gonna be a nice. Hour smoke because I like my cigars. I like to smoke for about an hour per stick. I took I, I got that. I lit it up and that was it. I haven't smoked a consistently smoked a, a sweet cigar yeah. since. But your friends are smart and a lot of people to get their friends to smoke cigars. They say, "Oh, this one's sweet. Try it." And then it's usually a pretty smooth cigar, mm -hmm. and you're tasting a lot of that flavor, whether it's like coffee or more sweeter flavors. And then that's how they hook you. I mean, that's what we do with our customers that come in for the first time, so. Yeah, so actually, one of our questions, uh, now that we're on that topic, is um, how do you curate your cigars for your customers? Because you are obviously going to have some aficionados come, mm -hmm. but I'm sure in this area, too, since this is a relatively new place, you might have a lot of new people. So exactly. how do you curate to each customer? Well, what I, I try to do when I speak to the customers is I just ask them, you know, the direct questions. One, have you 
smoked cigars before? The answer is yes. Then I'm like, okay, well, where do you, what's your strength of it? Where do you like to, you know, what do you like to smoke? Try to find out some brand names that they smoke, so I'll have an idea based off what they tell me. If they say, oh, you know, I, you know, I love smoking a Toro Fuente, then I know for the most part you're like a medium to full body, more medium yeah. sort of smoker. So then I try to find either the exact cigar they have or something comparable to it. If it's someone that's relatively new. Then where I take it is, well, I'll ask them, well, do you want to smoke something flavored wise that's more natural or do you want something sweet, you know, a vanilla, a caramel, a chocolate? Mm-hmm. Based off of what they tell me, then I know kind of where I'm going to place them. I normally try to start people who haven't smoked at that medium space because they're going to have a lot more options, even whether it's uh, flavored or not. Right. So then once they're, you know, once they have that first stick and they come back, I'll have another 12, 15, 20 sticks to kind of get them inundated into the cigar life. Right. So you can so, go kind of either which way if they want something stronger or something right. not as strong. You got plenty of options for them. Exactly. Exactly. And, and then even when the when what I like to call the newbies come in and they say, oh, I was with my friend and they had, just for an example, a tabernacle. I'll say, you might not want to start there. Yeah. You, you <laughs> might want to yeah. take a step back. <laughs> I know what you saw, and maybe you took a pull or two, and you thought it was pretty good, but a pull or two on something on the heavier, spicy side is a lot different than the entire stick, yeah. especially if you don't have the the smoking skill set. You may be inhaling, you know, stuff right. like that, so then you kind of got to go over why you shouldn't inhale, what may happen if you do it too many times, so forth and so on, and as we all know. You take too much of that in your system, you're going to be in for a bad night. Yeah, the dinner's going to so. be all over the floor, and then you're going to have to clean it up. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so. like um, after 12 years of smoking, you kind of see yourself and all these new people who are like just joining the cigar industry or wanting to smoke cigars. You kind of see yourself where you were 12 years ago. So it's Absolutely. really easy to pick and choose and help them like guide them on their journey Absolutely. to like their own you know flavor profile. Absolutely. You, you don't realize how much knowledge you accure from just daily smoking like I, I can look at a stick almost at this point and kind of tell you generally where it probably lands as far as the flavor profile right. or the strength uh maybe not necessarily the flavor profile but the strength in general well i'm glad you said that because that's something i see all the time people make fun of me and i'm like no listen when you do it enough you can look at a cigar and have a general idea of what it's going to taste like and you might not always be 100 percent right but you get a general idea you of do. the body and the flavor profile you do and then you know a, a huge a large majority of the sticks are dominican nicaraguan so you right. already know that that's going to be in that medium to full profile right and that's i mean most of the industry kind of sits in the medium right. sort of place because that's just the easier way to kind of get people in it's not too light it's not too heavy so most of the cigars we sell i'd probably say 75 percent is like in that medium to full yeah. light light full body not the the tabernacle or the double letter or the chapter twos lfd sort of full full body stuff but that i don't know like a like medium plus basically. medium plus like a aj fernando fernandez uh pure especial yeah that's like a to me a it's a full body but it's not as heavy as I don't know, the CAL Brasilia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a two totally different levels of full body right. cigars. Yeah. Well, and two, um, the majority of the American market does lean towards medium plus, medium full. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think that's kind of just based on the selection we've had. I mean, we can't have Cubans. We can't sell Cubans here. So, mm, obviously, so everybody you're not going to get that mild to medium profile. Right. Uh, that's more in Europe. But here, everyone likes, you know, Maduro's medium to full, uh, or even the, a darker Habano wrapper, something like that. That's right. just generally where the market is here in America. Right. So as far as your selection goes, um, how would you describe it? I know, you know, we know the answer. You've got a wide variety of mainstream and boutique. Yes. So how do you keep that balance of, you know, different brands for people to enjoy? It's really based off of the customers. I mean, everything that we do is really based off of the customer feedback that we get we try our very best to kind of especially when it comes to the cigars cater to what our customers like to smoke you know we have our preferences you know being you know 
I wouldn't go as far as saying as aficionados, but being ownerships of the business, we, we have our idea of what we think people will like, where we think the market is going, but based off of the sales of certain things, we will put certain sticks out, we will give people the information on them, and we see how it moves. Yeah. Um, or we'll get feedback from customers. They'll come in and say, oh, man, you know, I went to this place and I love this cigar. And if I get enough people coming in asking for that, at least that brand. So I don't know, Blind Man's Bluff. Mm -hmm. You know, they have different they have different types of Blind Man's Bluff. But if I get a bunch of people asking for that, then we'll go ahead and put that on the shelves. Yeah. And then we'll see how it sells. You know, we'll try to lead people into, hey, listen, we have this stick now try it tell me what you think okay and that's basically how we try to go about it. it it's really everything we try to do here when it comes to inventory is about what the customers want no that's great i mean and i think it's the best way to run a business especially a business like this is you know making sure that your customers enjoy the products that you have absolutely it's like you said if you fill the human door with only stuff that you like maybe half your customer base is going to be left out because they like other stuff, like you said, maybe Black right. Man's Bluff or whatever, which I think is a great cigar. I think it's really good too. Yeah. What uh, What else would you say makes your lounge stand out? You've got a lot of stuff going on here, so tell us about some of the things you offer besides cigars. Well, some of the stuff that we like to do here at the Leaf is uh, we try to do a lot of different events. Yeah, we are lucky enough to have a pretty nice size space. We're about twenty five hundred square feet, so with you know the amount of space we have it allows us to kind of do things that are a little different uh, we do things you know you got your typical like your ladies nights and things like that that most places like this have but we do things like uh, karaoke on Tuesdays mm -hmm. uh, we do things like um, every third Sunday we have what's called soulful Sundays where we have a live vocalist come in and sing uh, we also are lucky and blessed enough to have a full restaurant mm. right on site so if you want something to eat you can get something so we have fish and wings and hoey sandwiches and stuff like that we, we try to keep everything in house um and you know just as an example uh super bowl sunday is coming up so on super bowl sunday we have a courtyard right on the outside of the lounge we will be doing a tailgate party okay nice. so we are gonna have uh, 88 inch television outside to watch the game uh, my partner is going to be grilling up an entire uh, hog oh, so wow. we can sell plates from uh, of that plus you know we still have the kitchen the goldfish bowl check that out um shameless plug <laughs> uh so we'll be doing that uh we also do things like uh what is it that we called it you know uh paint and sip Paint and sip, no. So you ever been to a paint and sip where you go with like a friend of yours and there's a guy who's guiding you on how to paint a particular image? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. We do our own rendition of that and we call it puff and paint. Gotcha. So very similar. Kind of have someone come in, guide them. The, the painting is always cigar themed. Stuff like that. So we want to do things that is really catered to, to the cigar smokers, but also bringing in some other people that may not that they might see us and go, oh, that's a cigar bar. That's not for me. Gotcha, oh, yeah. you may still be able to come in and have a good time. You might not even smoke a cigar. We also have hookahs. So if you're into hookahs, you can get a hookah. So that way you're not out of the wow. smoking community. It may not be a cigar. We're not, you know, we're not here to judge. But you still can have a good time. Um, and, and, you know, things like that. Things like that. We have a game night on Thursday. There's a lot of stuff that we do now yeah. to like, think about it. That's pretty great. I and mean, we've talked about this a few times too. There's a lot of places that it's just a cigar lounge and there's nothing wrong with that. There's Absolutely. a lot of the cigar clientele that just want to come hang out, smoke a cigar. They don't need liquor or beer or anything like that. Right. But there's a lot of newer lounges that are curating towards more people where it's, you can come in and have a drink. You can come in and have food, uh, you know, I guess arts and crafts, paintings, Games, sports, whatever. Yeah, sports. That's right. another thing too. I mean, you know, having a NFL on or NBA, right. whatever. Exactly. Anyone? You have seven televisions, so yeah, we utilize that as much as possible. So if there is, I don't know, you know, we got the playoffs from from NFL, and there's multiple games on. We have multiple televisions to watch it. You know, when soccer is on, multiple leagues, you can do that. Uh, UFC, anything like that. We want it to be where when people come here, 
they have a bunch of different things to do outside of just mm -hmm. having a smoke and sitting down and hanging out with your yeah. friends, which again is fantastic. That is always the foundation, but in addition to that, mm -hmm. we want to give people different options. Yeah, I guess we're seeing the cigar industry become less of a club, so to say, of just people that are cigar smokers, right. but it's more inclusive to either new cigar smokers or people that just want to hang out and have a drink or Absolutely. you know, hang out with their friends that are smoking cigars they don't want to necessarily partake for whatever reason. Um, so we're seeing that shift of more inclusive to all customers right and that's honestly uh in my opinion that's kind of how you get them to become inundated with the cigars they may just come in and say oh you know my friend smokes cigars and i'm just going to come and hang out with him i'm not a big cigar smoker but they're doing that we're watching the game yeah cool all right i'll watch the game i'll have a drink and your friend is there having a cigar and then you might get hungry so you'll get a meal all right, I'll get some fries and some wings. Okay, your buddy's still there smoking a cigar. Just from osmosis, you'll be like, oh, there's a lot of cigars <laughs> here. That doesn't smell bad. Mm, you got something light? And then they smoke and they go, oh, just like me 12 years ago. Oh, this is not nearly as bad as mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be. Uh, maybe I'll come back next week. Yeah, and yeah. then two years later... I feel like the whole smell thing is conflated between cigarettes and cigars. Absolutely. I can't tell you how many times people... Will say, "Oh, were you smoking cigarettes, or like were you just smoking?" Because like smoke a jacket smells like cigars, but to me, there's a clear differential between cigarette smoke and cigars. Oh, there absolutely is. There, yeah. If you have someone next to me that's smoking a cigarette and I'm smoking a cigar, you won't smell that cigar. You won't smell that cigarette. Right. I hope not. The so you know. I would say like the cigar smoke is stronger. Uh, so like even if you smoke a cigar, it's going to be more prominent on your clothes and everything like mm -hmm. that than cigarette smoke. But the cigarette smoke has a completely different smell, too. Different. It is definitely, definitely different. Uh, I've never partaked in smoking cigarettes for a bevy of different reasons. Yeah. But uh, I notice if I go someplace, and you guys have probably had that same experience, too. If smoking is allowed and you crack open a cigar, the whole atmosphere sort of changes. They're like, <laughs> oh, he has a cigar. He's a ginormous cigarette. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Call it what you want, but uh, and then once you take that first pull and that plume of smoke comes out, it kind of removes the whole. It changes the entire atmosphere. Yeah. I've had experiences where I've had a cigar in a place where people were smoking cigarettes, and then they asked me not to smoke the cigar. Oh, really? And wow. I'm like, well, isn't that the pot and kettle black? I mean, it's like four of you guys here. That's just one cigar. Yeah, exactly. I can show you what it is. I can I can get you into what we like to call real smoking if that's, <laughs> if that's what you want. But at least your tobacco is natural. That too. It's not processed. That too. And I guess another part of it too is <clears throat> people are starting to realize that there is a clear difference between cigars and cigarettes, which I think has helped the business become more, um, you know, included in the community. Uh, people are realizing that. You know, like you said, the tobacco, it's 100% tobacco. It's all natural. There's no additives. There's no chemicals. So it's completely different from cigarettes. Absolutely. So to the point where I guess some people get offended when you smoke a cigar in, the, in a room full of cigarette smokers. I, I mean, I think a lot of that is also um, just baseline knowledge. They just don't know yeah. the difference, which is fine. I, You know, at one point, I didn't either. So I'm not knocking that, yeah. but it is... Cigar smoke is definitely a much more potent aroma. Mm -hmm. So I think people that aren't in the cigar community or they're around someone who's smoking is like, oh, I don't want that on my clothes. Yeah. I don't want to smell like I was at a cigar bar or something like that. And then I'm like, well, you're smoking a cigarette. You come home smelling like cigarettes. Yeah. So you're going to smell like smoke either way. It's really not the big of a difference. Yeah. And then when you come to a, a cigar lounge, you know, not to toot our own horn here, but... You know, we also, most prominent cigar lounges have smoke eaters that will minimize the amount of smell you'll have on your clothes. I can't tell you how many customers have come in here and initially was like, oh, I was very apprehensive because I didn't want to come out smelling like smoke. They came in, had a good time, sat here for a few hours, was around their friends smoking cigars and came back and was like, you know, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. You know, I heard the smoke eaters, I saw the smoke eaters. And when I got home, I 
I had an aroma, yeah, I was in a place where everyone was smoking, but I didn't feel like I had to throw my clothes in a bag yeah. and put it in the back of the closet. It's not nearly as bad as maybe it was 30 years ago when right. the smoke eaters weren't as, you know, strong as they are now. Exactly, yeah. A lot of, uh, especially the newer cigar lounges, want to make sure that they have really nice smoke eaters, very effective smoke eaters for that reason. So that way you can walk in for five minutes and leave and you might not even smell like smoke at all. No. Whereas like, and there's still places, like I went to a place up north um, and you walk in and it's just a cloud of smoke. And I legitimately was getting sick just being in there because of how much smoke I was actually inhaling because that it's is not crazy. getting filtered out. Yeah. Right. That I've been to a few places like that. Like, wait, you guys don't even have, you know, you don't open up a door or anything. Yeah. Like, a you lot just of places gonna won't move. let you open the window either. Yeah. You just gotta, you're just gonna let this plume of old smoke just sit in the, at the roof of the place and just, Man, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I, that is just no, and that's I think what they're thinking of, right? As opposed to a, a you know, w- you know, one of your normal places where you know you might have 10, 15 people smoking and you might never see the smoke outside of when they just exhale it, right? Because the smoke eaters are doing their job, and you can you will still come out with an aroma, but it's not going to be that I can't see you like you're in a fog yeah. or anything like that. No, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. We're sophisticated. And it all kind of goes back to, uh, I guess, how people were educated on smoking in general. There's been a big uh, narrative where cigars have been associated with big tobacco, just in general. Right. You know, whether it's you know the effects of tobacco and or, or cigarettes, you know, it's all lumped together. So people think of smoking anything, and they think, okay, well, you know, that's a no-no. Right. You go to these places, and it's like you know you're inhaling smoke and all this and that. But it's completely different. You're not inhaling it. And like you said, you go to these places now and, you know, the smoke is all cleared and you'll be fine. You won't smell like smoke or you won't have to, you know, deal with inhaling secondhand smoke, really. No, not at all. Not at all. Which is part of what I I enjoy. Yeah, of course. I mean, even as a cigar smoker, I don't like going into a lounge where it's super, super smoky. No, because then I can't enjoy the aroma of what I'm smoking. Exactly. You know, especially if, like, I don't know about you guys, when I first smoke something new, I kind of want it to be sort of clear so I can yeah. get I can get the smoke, I can do a retro hail, I can kind of get the notes or, or try to get as much of the notes as I mm-hmm. can. But if it's just a plume of everyone else's smoke and it's all sort of mixed up, first of all, that's just aesthetically not appealing. Right. Um, and two, it kind of takes away from your individual experience. That's true, yeah. Well, like when we were uh, first blending our cigar, the base of cigar, uh, we had to try different variations of the blend to decide which one was best. Right. And the rule was like, you have to be outside and preferably not at a lounge because you still get other people's cigars. So it's like, be at the house, you know, by yourself or with some, or with, you know, someone else is smoking the same thing. Mm-hmm. So you can not have other aromas impacting the experience. Exactly. Exactly. And actually, real quick, while we're on the topic, uh, we are going to be having a cut and light here at this lounge for the base of cigar. Absolutely. So that's going to be a big event. We're going to be posting a lot about that. So make sure you check out our social media as well as uh, the Leaf Lounge social media. Everything's going to be in the description for you to check out. Uh, So be sure to put that on your calendar and come here. It's going to be a great time. I just want to plug that real quick before we keep talking. Yes, please. The 24th of February. Saturday, so you got no plans. You can be here. <laughs> Please. So what um, <clears throat> what got you to actually start your own lounge? You talked a bit about how you got into cigars. What was the turning point of, okay, this is something that I want to do, you know, as a business? Well, it sort of kind of fell, it fell into my hands. Uh, it wasn't something that um, where I woke up one day and was like, man, I really want a cigar lounge. Uh, there was a a friend of mine who uh, was in the cigar industry, and he came to me one day and was like, "Man, I'm really looking forward. I really want to do a brick and mortar." And at the time, I was, you know, I was a cigar smoker, so I was like, "Hey, man, you know, go for it. Um, if there's any way to that I can help you, let me know." Uh, at the time, I had a, a social media management production company, so I was, you know, pretty well versed in that type of stuff. 
and we started we started looking for places and just kind of just naturally i kind of got involved in it and um he was like man i, I really want to do this with you guys with you i was like okay uh a friend of ours then reached out to him and was like hey i know you and bar are looking for a location uh there's a place in titusville that i think would be really good uh if you got some time come and check it out so we came up here and it was this location we all fell in love with it, said this would be perfect. It's right in the downtown area. There wasn't another cigar lounge in the city. So minimum, you know, uh, competition and all that. And uh, that gentleman uh, then said to us, like, hey, you know, I'd love to be a part of this. Uh, and I have a brother who's also looking to invest into a business and he would like to be a part of it. So if if that worked out for you guys, the four of us can go into business together. We all met. We all thought it was a good idea. And that's how we got started. Um, and that's how, luck be known, uh, our our actual parent company for the Leaf Lounge is actually called the Cigar Guys as well. <laughs> I love but, it. I love but it. with a Z. So yeah. um, that's how our Cigar Guys got started. <laughs> and um, so we did that. We signed the lease and we started putting the elbow grease here into the location. We, you know, took the three and a half months to get everything going. The doors opened up in uh, October 30th, 2021, 2021. Yeah, we opened up and uh, business has been going well since then. Uh, that original person that we were working with, uh, the fourth cigar guy, uh, it just ended up not being a good fit for him. So he decided to kind of just remove himself. And since then, it's just been the three of us. Okay. So I ask this, you have the... LLC, the Cigar Guys. Cigar Guys, so LLC. How did you come up with the name Leaf Lounge? That was an interesting conversation. Uh, we were trying to figure out the name for for uh, the lounge, and you know we were going through a lot of different names and everything. And then one of my business partners was like, "Hey, you know what? We the name should be an acronym for something." So we were going through all these different acronyms, and then he came up. Shout out to Greg uh, with the acronym. Uh, we went with LEAF, and the acronym stands for Life Experience and Flavor. Oh, okay. That's awesome. So that's what LEAF stands for. Uh, and then just lounge because we were in lounge. Yeah. And that's kind of how that came about. And then we just went into trying to figure out what the the visualization of that would be. So we figured that out, and I created the, the, the logo, and we kind of just ran from there. So it, Yeah, it's really refreshing to have, like, smoke or smoke shop in the name or cigar in the name. Like it's not so obvious, right? It's inferred. Exactly. So you come there and like that's what the you know more than people can just you know have a drink or a smoke. It's not just cigars. No, it's not. And we didn't want to go with, you know, like cigar c- lounge. cigar lounge, yeah. <laughs> John cigar lounge or something like that because that's just sort of, uh, too. It was just too simple. Yeah. We wanted to do something that lent into the smoking, but not necessarily was like smoke. Right, yeah. Because we we always had the notion of doing more than just being a cigar lounge. That is the foundation of what we do. Right. But we wanted it to be as inclusive as possible for everyone in the, the location. Exactly. In yeah. the area. And you've accomplished that for sure. I mean, you've talked about all the other things you offer, uh, you know, beer, wine, all the other stuff. Right. To make it inclusive for everyone. Um, let's talk a little bit about the area, too, because um, people might hear Titusville and have you know, their own uh, opinions of it. So tell us a little bit about this area. Uh, you know, is it, up, is it an up and coming area or, you know, what's going on in Titusville? So uh, one of the reasons why we decided to open up the lounge here in Titusville is because the location is up and coming. Um, we are right in the middle of most of the space program. So SpaceX, Boeing, uh, NASA, you name it, they all have come back into the Broward County area. Um, and a lot of the employees that they, um, they hire live here in Titusville, mm. all the surrounding cities. So uh, maybe many, uh, many years ago, maybe eight years ago, when the space uh, programs left, it became very destitute here. But once, it com- once it's come back, now we have this influx of people living in the communities. And Titusville is doing a really good job of trying to get small businesses to come back into the area to make sure that the money that these people are making here stays here in the city. 
Um, so it just made sense for us to be here. And then, like I said, we just found a really good location right in the middle of the downtown area. So everything that's going on here is really lending to more people coming to downtown. Yeah. And us being the only cigar lounge in the area, it really, it it, it makes us like the epicenter of Titusville. Gotcha. Yeah. And two, I mean, uh, you gave uh, myself and Mark when we were here, basically the grand tour of the downtown area. Yes. And we were able to see all the different businesses that are here from, you know, whiskey lounges, whiskey bars, you got a burger joint, you got a bunch of stuff going on here. So it's definitely a nice, busy downtown area. Absolutely. And a lot, a lot of those businesses have just come into the area. We've been here just over two years. And I would say almost half of those businesses came in just as we did or right after us. Okay. Yeah. So that just kind of lends to what's going on in the city. And um, from what we're getting from uh, the space programs, they are looking to hire probably each one of them anywhere from two to 5,000 employees within the next five years. Oh, okay. And most of them are gonna be living here in the right. city. So, so at nighttime, is a lot more for like foot traffic? Absolutely, especially on the weekend. So you will get a lot of people just walking by, just looking in, popping in, maybe grabbing a drink, grabbing a cigar. Um, a lot of the customers that we get, even though we've been here two years, are still like, oh, I haven't been downtown in forever. I didn't know you guys even were here. So every day there's an opportunity for us to have a new customer in here. And this is after thousands of posts on social media and, and uh, thousands of people already being here and speaking well about us. We still to this day get new customers, whether they're coming uh, to, the, to the lounge and someone told them that we were here or they just passed by. Or may, a lot of what we also get now is because we have the restaurant connected to us, they may come to get the food mm. and did not realize that the location is connected directly with the cigar lounge. And when is the restaurant open? It's open the same days, the same hours, the same days Perfect. as us. So we are adjacent that way. Uh, so they may come and get, you know, a steak hoagie and go, well, what's that in the front? Oh, that's the cigar lounge? Oh, I didn't even know. My husband or my wife or my best friend smokes cigars. I'm going to tell him about that. And then someone else will come in. And yeah, I think... Um you said, too, there's apartments being built right across the street, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. So right across the street from us, they have renovated a historic building, made it into several different apartments and condos, and they just opened it up. We, we have a few tenants that we know of that's actually come into the lounge that live directly across the street from us. So they don't even have to drive. They can yeah. just cross a really short street, the two-lane street, and come right into the lounge. And then I believe that they're going to be doing retail on the bottom as well, which is going to, again, bring more customers into the area that they may go over there to shop at whatever retail they have there and go, oh, you know what, I'm hungry or, you know, I could use a drink or, oh, I heard there's a cigar lounge across the street and then sashay right across the street. Exactly. Yeah. It really yeah. helps too to have a bunch of different businesses in that same area because, you know, you don't need to drive to other places, other towns to get what you need. You got everything, you know, at your home, basically. Exactly. And people exactly. can uh, smoke and drink right outside? Right outside. You so can't we... walk with your drink across the street right like that? Now, with the drinks, no. Uh, Not with the drinks. But with the cigars, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we do put the seating outside. We have, like, the shaded umbrellas. So if it's a nice day like today seems like it's going to be, they can just hang outside if the, if, if the smoke might not be too much for them. Or sometimes we'll see, you know, you may have... You know your teen teenage son or daughter with you yeah they might want to get something to eat and you might want to grab a, a stick you can do that and then you guys can sit right outside you can enjoy the cigar she can enjoy the meal and still be in the premises yeah. so we try to cater and we do have seating in the back area as well uh for the restaurant so we try to accommodate as many people as we can yeah for sure and even like you said the restaurants in the back i think you guys got a to-go window as well so everything is kind of just like it's on the outside, but it's pointing back to the actual exactly. lounge. Exactly. It all points back to the lounge. Even when we have, you know, customers here in the lounge, they can order in the lounge and we can present the food to them. So they don't have to move to get their food. Because, you know, as you know, most um most cigar lounges, they just they don't have food on yeah, site. Yeah. So if you are like you get hungry or something, you got to order takeout or Uber or Uber Eats or whatever. We have it right here. You can just pick up a menu, 
hey, let me get some fries and some wings and fries. We'll bring it right to you and you can continue hanging out. You don't have to move from your space. Is it like a digital menu? Can you pay for it here? You can pay for it smoking? here. You can pay for everything right here. We have physical menus. You just go to the bar and say, hey, let me get six wings and fries. We go give it back to the to the kitchen in the back. They make the magic happen. We bring it right back out front for you. So if you're sitting comfortable the way we are right now, you just order your food right there and then pay for it right here on site. That's definitely a, a special thing in Florida. We kind of touched on it. You know, this is one of the only places of maybe three or four in the state that we know of that is able to serve food in the lounge. Right. Sell it there, serve it there, because, you know, based on the laws, it's pretty hard to do. Right. Uh, we, we lucked up because we it's a separate entity. Right. It just so happens that it's in the same building, but the build it, the restaurant is a separate address, separate entity, technically gotcha, yeah. speaking. So though we, we are physically together, they are two separate entities. Yeah. So that's where we it locked up with the location. Gotcha. Yeah. Plus, you guys like complement each other's businesses. So we're right. Very, and it's know, the, the ownership group is still the same. So yeah. it's not like that's different. It's just they're two separate entities. So uh, I'm going to ask you too. What would be? So I'm going to ask you three of your favorite cigars. Go with like a cheap one, a medium price one, and like a high price one. What would you say are some of your either your go tos or your favorites in each of those ranges? Ooh, okay. Uh, cheap. Cheap is such a relative. Uh, like, let's say, you know, five to eight dollars. Five to eight dollars. I would go with, hmm, AJ Fernandez Last Call. Oh, yeah. That's like an eight dollar stick. Yeah. Uh, I like that stick. That is literally kind of makes sense. It's like, oh, yeah, at the end of the night, you kind of want one more stick, but you don't want to do another 60 gauge. You just, you know, something that's just going to kind of tape you out for the night yeah. last call works really well for that uh medium stick i would go with hmm i got several medium sticks uh i like the new world dorado uh that's a really good medium price stick i think that's around 14 dollars uh again i told you guys i love lfd mm -hmm. um so anything chapter two double the heroes i love those um Oh, Perdermo, 10th and, and or 20th anniversary Sun Roam. Oh, yeah. Excellent stick. Excellent stick. Uh, if I go high end, Placencia, the hexagon. Okay, yeah. That's that, definitely a, a that is That smokes so, so, so well. Um, yeah. Off, if I just the first thought that was the first one that came to mind that hexagon, yeah. Uh, and I'm personally not a high end, expensive stick smoker. I I honestly believe you can find an extremely good stick for under fifteen dollars. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but that Placencia, there's a reason. I do agree. There is a reason why they price it the way they do. Yeah. You can definitely tell the difference. So those yeah, would probably be my three for that. Yeah. And we got all three of those here at the lounge. There's definitely a lot of people I've talked to that have said, like, that is one of their favorite high-end cigars. Um, me personally, I actually have had quite a few of them. I've not been a fan personally. But there's so many people that that's one of their top three cigars, that hexagon shape for sure. I mean, aesthetically, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, there's I, not a lot of cigars like that. No. Very, very few. Uh, so I know it takes a little more time to kind of create that stick. Uh, so I like the the aesthetic of it. But again, for me, I get, and I know everybody is a little different with it, I get a lot of the complexity out of that stick. Yeah. Um, so I enjoy that, especially coming from someone that I typically smoke something like the Tabernacle or, like I said, the Chapter 2, or things of that nature, stuff that's more on the heavier side. Um, that, to me, is one of those medium light full body sticks yeah and then and i'm also a, a whiskey drinker as well so it goes really really well with one of my favorite whiskeys so i like to smell so and what is that whiskey yeah i'm a basil hayden guy oh nice good, good. Like, good. toast basil hayden toast i like the toast but i also like the wine cast oh, a really? lot of people haven't had a chance to taste that now it's a little bit more on the expensive side but that with the placentia 
mm. is an experience. I'm not a, at the Cincinnati. Yeah. Is that your favorite cigar? I just want to ask from your body. No, my favorite cigar. <laughs> mm, is the LFP Bubba Lajero. Okay. If the, if I had one smoke, one cigar to smoke, and I couldn't smoke anything else, it'd be the LFD Double Arrow. Any 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 gauge size, I can go with that. Maybe cl very close. Second is the Chapter Two, okay. the Chisel Chapter Two. I can go with that as well. That's also another unique shape too. Yes, you don't see the chisels that often as well, but yeah. that I call it like the built-in smoking tip. You know they have the tips exactly <laughs> exactly and i um normally i like a v-cut but because it's a chisel you yeah. just kind of cut off the tip and exactly. just kind of go with it it works yeah. it works and so after, either one of those so after 12 years of smoking you no longer smoke like javas or flavor cigars anymore I, my my palate has changed yeah I, it changes frequently sometimes it, it does but from from the flavor to the non-flavored yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is at this point, but when I, if I try to smoke something flavored, I can taste whatever it is that they use yeah. to make the flavor. It doesn't, it it's doesn't, like a no. chemical taste yeah, style. whatever that is, I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know what guys use to make the flavors, but whatever that is, Red 40. <laughs> it's just, it just doesn't. And it's a waste. Like when we get something new in, I try to, you know, try it out just so I can speak to it, but I'm. I'm not going to smoke it regularly. It's a waste. I'd right. rather have the customers that enjoy it use it. Of course, because yeah. the, the flavored cigars are very popular and they sell very well. Absolutely. They help keep these doors open. Yeah. We, I mean, we talked to uh, plenty of cigar shop owners, cigar lounge owners, and they say like, man, I don't push these flavored cigars. They sell themselves. They really do. Especially for our um, either our first timers or I our female demographic. Yeah, of course. They gravitate to the light sweet stuff because it's it's an easier smoke. Yeah. And I kind of I lead them that way too. Like if they want something flavored, I let them go there and then I tell them like, "Hey, after a while we're going to we're going to graduate you guys. Yeah. You can always come home. Exactly. So it's always going to be here for you, but we we want you to kind of really get into the cigar community." So I feel like um Flavored cigars are people's gateway cigar into the you know cigar Absol industry in the world itself. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, personally, I didn't start on a flavored cigar. I started oh, yeah, on the Cristo yeah. Yellow Series. Mm -hmm. or, you know. I did. I still. We still have the Javas here now. Yeah. And I do that solely just just for reminiscent purposes. Like that's that's what got me here. You know, when no one's looking and you're here by yourself, <laughs> you walk by and maybe you. Know, she looks at me. Like again? Yeah. She looks at me. I look at her. <laughs> we reminisce. It's like you know. It's like an old girlfriend. Like you know, we did have. Some you know, it's not good for you, but you know. <laughs> I mean, she's she's still good to me. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But you know, we we just move forward. You yeah. know. But I you know I still give her a look. And What's like on? you said earlier too, you guys have hookah, so that's even a safer bet for some people. They don't even want the flavored cigars. Go exactly. with something that's easier, like a hookah. I can't do that personally. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with the inhaling aspect yeah. of it. I just, because I smoke cigars so much, the inhaling thing is just not natural for yeah. me. Uh, I cough every time as if I've never smoked anything in my life. I'm like, yeah. nope, I'm not going to embarrass myself. That's yeah, you know, cigars, it's natural to prevent inhaling. Exactly. You know, I just like the flavor, the taste. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I think the few times I've done hookah too, I just, I don't even inhale it. You know, I'll just puff on it kind of like yeah. a cigar, still get some of the flavor. And then go ahead. But like as far as you go to like actually inhaling would be the do the retro right i'll do the, the retro, retro inhaling inhale. but i don't i don't naturally do that as i'm smoking a cigar i'll do that when i'm just trying to to get a full yeah. taste of something it's something i do the, the first time i smoke a particular cigar i'll retro inhale it a couple of times but once i kind of get the idea of what it is i leave that alone yeah. that spicy note that comes on the back end of most cigars when you retro inhale i'm not a big fan of that yeah Especially, I mean, some of the more full body cigars, medium oh. to full, that'll kick you. The light stuff, you it's like, oh, I didn't even have to retro hit it. Yeah, but exactly. that, the full body stuff, oh, you get it right at the right at the roof of your mouth. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, we're just doing this for research purposes. That's it. Yeah, exactly. For me, retro hailing, I, I used to never do it, and then you know, after a few years of smoking, I finally was able to teach myself. And now I've found myself, it's actually hard for me not to. So I'm one of those guys that like, just does it naturally. Oh, you're a better man than me. <laughs> the unfortunate thing about that though is you're, it's easier to get buzzed. 
For sure. Got who? So you got to be careful. That as well. So you got to, if you're looking for that buzz that a lot of people are like, oh, I don't get anything from when I smoke a cigar. Yeah. Learn how to retro. Usually out. cigarette smokers are like, I don't get it. You right. Don't get buzz. What's the point? Yeah. Like, well, that kind of then leans into the whole community aspect of why people smoke cigars. You don't necessarily smoke it to get a buzz right. the way you do like cigarettes or other things people smoke or drinking alcohol like you, you drink for the the after effect right there's a a real community aspect of smoking cigars that you just don't kind of get with anything else i can't tell you how many times i've gone to a cigar lounge by myself not looking to necessarily interact with anybody i'll grab a stick i find a space i'm having a smoke someone is in my eye shot or something and they'll ask me oh what are you smoking yeah and then two hours later we're best friends exactly yeah you know and then that community you just don't know who you will meet at a cigar lounge i have met millionaires i have met celebrities that i did not realize were celebrities or people that are in industries that i never thought i would be able to interact with yeah solely because we just happen to have the same hobby in in right yeah, they say the uh, cigar is like a great equalizer. It really is, yeah. Absolutely. It's great for networking. It's like Absolutely. A whole other group of people you've never met before. Doing so many different things. you, it, It's amazing. And I've only experienced that at a cigar lounge, not yeah. at a bar. Wow. I've been to plenty of bars in my life and sat there with drinks and stuff. And sometimes you talk to people, sometimes you don't. Yeah, because, I mean, at a normal bar, you still have those clicks, kind of. You're with right. your friends or the regulars or whatever. But at a cigar lounge, it's just so natural to mingle with everyone and everyone. Absolutely. You know, like whether you're, you know, a janitor or whether you're a CEO of a multi million dollar company, all those guys are sitting at the same table hanging out, having a good conversation, smoking cigars, and just talking about life. And everyone can kind of get together and relate on a lot of things. Absolutely. It's it's the coolest thing ever. And that and that kind of also led into why uh getting into this industry on this level was was very appealing to me yeah so i I enjoy what we do yeah i really do well i really appreciate you for showing us a lounge sharing it with our community uh and you know helping further highlight this industry highlight some of the lounges here in central florida uh thank you for having us and for having me make sure you guys come check out the leaf lounge in titusville we'll be here on the 24th but the basis cigars are going to be here pick one up Check out their humidor. They got a great selection, multiple humidors with mainstream, boutique, even flavored cigars. They got everything here. So make sure to come check them out. But I wanted to thank you for tuning into this episode, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Real fast. And say what leaf means again. Leaf. Life, experience, and flavor. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors. Crafted for the newcomer and the connoisseur, the Besa embodies excellence at every level. Each draw, a journey through rich, nuanced flavors, and a smooth, unforgettable finish. Base a cigar, where tradition meets perfection.